Hello and welcome to Yorkshire Voice. I'm Anissa Jaffrey. Here are today's top stories. Residents of Roundhay Park are left angry as the council approved plans for 80,000 capacity concerts. Childhood obesity rates in Leeds are down. And it's the Make May Purple Month for Stroke Awareness. We'll be joined live later on by Joe Beverly, spokesperson for the campaign. Plans were approved today by Lee City Council to turn the event space at Round A Park from a capacity of 20,000 to a semi-structured 80,000 capacity space. Our reporter Harry McMullen has been following the story and joins us now live from Round A Park. Good afternoon Harry, what's been going on today? Well thank you Anita. Uh, plans were approved today as you have mentioned at a council meeting. Um, I think the council are trying to bring back the old glory days here of Round A Park where the ball behind me was filled out by acts like Michael Jackson, Madonna, the Rolling Stones and Genesis. Uh, but there have been a lot of objections from waste management. Uh, traffic would be an issue for residents as well. And also when Roundhay Park hosts events such as their annual bonfire, a lot of antisocial behaviour is reported in the area. But here's what the people in the park had to say. Personally, uh, to look down there at uh, an, an 80,000 uh, seater uh, bowl, um, would be uh, would be very disappointed, uh, really. As it is now, you know it's looking at its uh, at its best. I think it would be good for the city in terms of drawing big name acts to come and play here. So obviously, for people who like going to concerts, that's really good. I need to be fair. I think that uh, around the park is one of the best things in Leeds, and people come here for the green. I mean to get people breathing really good there and basically try to remove all greens for concrete. I don't think is a really good As you can see, there were some divisions in opinion throughout the piece. Um, people want the axe to play here in this big natural ball in the park, but also people want the green space that it provides and people want the council to do something about the waste management issues that they have and the traffic. Uh, but one thing we can all agree on here is come this summer when Ed Sheeran will be down there on his stage, the place will be absolutely rocking. Back to you in the studio. Thank, thanks, Harry. Now the rest of the day's news. Concern is growing for a woman from North Leeds who went missing after a night out in the city centre. Hannah Barker, who's 21, was last seen on Merrion Street in the early hours of Sunday morning. Her car was found parked in a city centre car park. She then did not turn up for work on Monday morning. She is described as five, six, five foot six and of large build with nose piercings and tattoos on her left arm. Hannah was last seen wearing black skinny jeans and a burgundy t-shirt and trainers. Contact police on 101 if you have any information. Workers at the restaurant chain, James Italian, are worried about their jobs. It comes after news that the company has gone into administration. The restaurant in Leeds is one of those that is under threat. In February, the restaurant in Harrogate was shut. 450 people lost their jobs. The Yorkshire-based supermarket Giant Morrison's is set to become the first supermarket in the country to make their fruit and veg aisle plastic free. Horsford is one of the latest stores to take on the initiative. The chain has been trialling the plastic free schemes in Geisley, Skipton and St Ives for the past 10 months. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, better for the environment. Uh, we just think that they should do the same thing for the boxes. I think the supermarket should get rid of all the plastic and just all they need to do is just get bins outside the front doors and people can discard all the paper and the plastics. Uh, it sounds like a positive change, uh, yeah, step towards uh, a more beneficial environment. Welcome to Yorkshire's Garden has won gold at the Chelsea Flower Show. The garden took 18 days to construct. It features authentic Yorkshire stonework, flowing water and reclaimed canal lock gates. We spoke to the garden's designer yesterday ahead of today's award. Uh, so inspired by Yorkshire's very, very rich uh, industrial heritage and how nature has basically reclaimed the kind of man scarring on the landscape and now we've got these fantastic environmental ecological corridors that people can use for leisure, walking, kayaking, not and just canal boats as well. 
Now, childhood obesity rates have dropped in Leeds. That's according to figures presented to the European Congress. Rates have dropped by 6.4% in the last year. It's a small but positive change. Childhood nutrition groups see this as parents and children being more enthusiastic about having active, healthy lifestyles. One of these groups is Henry. It was formed 10 years ago. Our reporter, Charlotte Lazos, has more. Childhood obesity rates have dropped in Leeds by 6.4%. That's according to figures presented to the European Congress. The topic of childhood obesity is constantly debated in the media today and often a controversial topic, but the dropping rate signifies a positive change in Leeds. One organisation, Henry, offers courses for parents to teach them about their child's health and well-being. It was formed 10 years ago after a new post was created by Public Health in Leeds. So it's about um, looking at the, the staff that work directly with families with children under five and help giving them the skills to actually work, work with them in a slightly different way rather than finger wagging and saying, oh, you know, you should do this, that and the other. It's about working with parents. So far, the courses offered by Henry have been positively received by parents including Fiona Jagger, who has seen a change in her daughter, Sienna's eating habits, as well as Fiona learning herself about the right types of food and quantity to give at meal times. I used to kind of think that she wasn't getting enough food and she'd, we'd have a bit of a, bit of a battle at meal times because she'd tell me that she didn't want to eat or that she was full and I kind of used to be like, well, no, you need to eat this, you need to eat that. After doing Henry and looking back, I was giving her huge portions, almost similar sized portions to what I'd give myself and then expecting her to eat it. Uh, parents enjoy actually coming, it's an enjoyable experience to be part of one of these programmes, one of the Henry programmes. It's um, Parents really value um, spending time thinking about their own child's needs um, and how they can better meet them. Henry also uses volunteers to help teach the courses offered to parents, including Louisa Hesketh Bream a nutrition student from Leeds University. Each week we cover a different topic um, which all kind of contribute to a healthy lifestyle and a healthy start for their children. Um, so we cover all sorts of things um, from, we cover diet and food, you know, like healthy plate type of thing, um, exercise and a healthy life, an active lifestyle. But what else could we be doing? Professor Pinky Sohota, who teaches the Nutrition and Childhood Obesity course at Leeds Beckett University, believes that schools in early years teaching have a crucial role in promoting a healthy lifestyle for children. Training the teachers to teach healthy eating to the children, offering children healthy school meals is, 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 an, is a factor. Um, and also, you know, physical activity is, is also a really important component of, of trying to tackle obesity. Whilst a small change, this drop in rates shows that parents and children are more enthusiastic about healthy, active lifestyles that will allow children to have a good start. Make Made Purple is the annual Stroke Awareness Month run by the charity Stroke Association. It encourages people to wear the colour purple in order to raise awareness and funds to help stroke victims make a full recovery and rebuild their lives. We're now joined live by Stroke Association spokesperson, Joe Beverly. Hi Joe. so could you tell us a little bit more about this organisation? Yes, so um, we are the Stroke Association and we are there for stroke survivors and their families offering advice and support and um, anything that really that we can do after, that, after they've um, been affected by stroke. And so strokes can ruin, ruin lives, how important is it to react quickly? Uh, it's very, very important. Um, once a stroke has happened, it starts shutting down your brain, um, certain parts of your brain. Um, and the quicker that you can get treatment, the, the more they say that you can save of that person as well. So it's always important to, uh, to ring 999 if you suspect you're having a stroke or if someone by you is having a stroke. And as a community, what can we do to raise awareness about strokes? Well, we're currently in uh, Make May Purple, so that is the whole of May every year. We um, raise awareness and funds to help support stroke survivors and to get the message out there about um, stroke, for, stroke prevention and um, what people can do. So anybody can take part in that. That's communities, families, businesses, individuals. Anybody can take part um, to just spread the word of, of stroke and uh, prevention and awareness. And where can we donate? So it can be done online. Um, just go to our website at stroke.org.uk 
or you can call our support care team on 0300-330-740. Brilliant. And so is there anything else that we could do as in like schools and universities? To Pardon, awareness? sorry? Do you know uh, what we could do in like schools to raise awareness? Um, it's making the kids aware. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of schools that do fundraising for us. They get in touch with us. We support them through some materials and ideas and things like that. Um, and inviting stroke survivors in to give talks if, if that's kind of what the school would like as well. Just to educate the children so they know what to look out for as well. Brilliant. Thank you, Joe. That's all we have time for. But thank you for coming on to the show. Thanks for having me. During... During Ramadan, Penny Appeal organised a community iftar event. The show allows you to enjoy some entertainment whilst breaking the fast with friends and family. On Saturday, I went down to Bradford to join in the community iftar. <laughs> The Community Iftar event hosted by Penny Appeal occurs every year and donations do go out to those in need. I wanted to know more from the volunteers at Penny Appeal. It's like a charity that um, is with the whole community, like loads of people get together, like help out with the poor. We've done like many different events before, like making um, winter parcels for those that live on the street, obviously. So we would give them like terrible hearts, like to everything that's warm and we give them them. Some people have already like walked around the streets to give them the bags and they were very like grateful for it. Like, the stuff that we take for granted, we gave others it and then you've seen the smile on their faces and you realise that that's a big thing for uh, us. Every Ramadan we uh, have a community star. Everyone who volunteers for Penny Pill gets a ticket, uh, whether it be in Bradford, Manchester, Rochdale, wherever. Um, tickets are £5. Uh, we have to sell it out to the community. Uh, after that, uh, obviously, we tell you how much we've got, and then obviously that goes towards our campaign. Not, you know, you don't have to be a Muslim to volunteer. I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions about, you know, Muslim charity. Everyone feels like it's a Muslim, you know, kind of mindset. But we welcome anyone and everyone. The event will be occurring all throughout Ramadan throughout different cities in the UK. A cake designer from Huddersfield has collected an award for designing the best wedding cakes in Yorkshire and Humber. James Fountain has this report. Debbie Gillespie of Shelley, Huddersfield, has scooped the 2019 Idor Magazine Awards for Best Wedding Cake Maker in the Yorkshire and Humber region. Debbie Gillespie's unusual cakes have grabbed the attention of the judges. After 13 years as a physiotherapist, she decided to switch to cake design and started her own company. But wasn't she a little bit shocked when she found out that she'd won this prestigious award? Absolutely, because I had no idea I'd even been nominated. I got an email one day to say I'd been nominated. So somebody out there, I don't know who it was, one of my brides or it might have even been my mum, uh, nominated me. Uh, I then emailed my brides and the fact that this is actually voted for by my couples. So not just the brides, I've actually had a couple of the groom's mums that have actually uh, voted for me as well. So the fact that it's people that I've actually provided cakes for, they're the ones that have judged it. So yeah, it's a real privilege. Debbie is delighted with the award and feels that this gives her the confidence to continue to make these weird and wonderful cakes to order. And now over to Alicia Atkinson for the weather. How's it looking? Hello Anissa, it's another lovely warm dry sunny day in Leeds today and uh, into this evening however there may be an occasional shower uh, but today there's been maximum of 20 degrees celsius uh, into this evening it's going to be dry, clear and chilly with lows of 3 degrees uh, tomorrow is going to look very similar as today so it's going to have hazy sunshine with, a with perhaps an occasional shower uh, there's going to be highs of 19 degrees as well uh, the outlook for the rest of the week is sunny and patchy rain and you can tell that the summer is definitely coming because the bluebells are starting to spring. Thanks Alicia and just, in, just um, at the end of the show we've just heard that Hannah Barker has been found safe and well and that's all we've got time for for on Yorkshire Voice. Remember to keep up to date with our stories from today on our website and on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye.